Now, I talked in a previous video about drawing the aldoses and the ketoses using the Fisher projection for the linear chains, and I made a comment that bottom carbons here are going to be what dictates, are going to be important. Actually, I was incorrect. It's stock carbon. I just misspoke. But here's the thing. We're going to look here at the carbon next to the aldehyde and the ketone functionality. But we're going to need a little bit of historical context here. So what's the historical context? When this when these were being studied by Emil Fischer, and yes, Emil Fischer of the Fischer projections and all the other scientists that were studying these compounds, the idea of optical rotation was a theory. We understood how it worked, but we didn't know the structures of these molecules. So this is going to predate the RS system, and which is going to create some confusion when we start talking about how these compounds are named. So if you were to name it by what you've probably learned so far in organic chemistry, you would do, oh, it's R or it's S. And the nice thing is that when we always arrange it this way, if the alcohol is on the right side, this is going to be an R aldose. If the alcohol is on the left side, it becomes an S aldose. But again, the naming of these compounds predates this RS notation. What we actually use is the DL notation. And the DL refer to dextrorotatory and levorotatory. So dextrose means dextro dextrorotatory means that when we look at the the polarized light going through the polarimeter, we'll actually turn to the right. We'll get positive rotation. If it goes left, we get levorotatory. It's moving towards the left. Now, at the time, they did not know which ones they had, the R and the S, so they made a guess. And the guess was that when they were working with very simple sugars, the R was dextro and the S was levo. And for the compounds they were studying with, they were correct. Now, this was 100% a guess. They assumed and they got lucky. It could be very much like electrochemistry where the signs are flipped on the battery because somebody guessed, Ben Franklin, and now we're stuck with that notation. But we got very lucky with these. So if we had the simplest of these aldol, aldoses and ketoses, It does, in fact, work out that if the alcohol here is on the right side, it's R and it's dextrorotatory. And if the alcohol is on the left, it's S and it's levorotatory. What it doesn't predict is that even though we use that DL for subsequently higher carbons or longer chains, so if we ended up producing something like this. Because the OH group is still up here on the right, this is still considered a D classification of aldoses. If the alcohol was on the left, it would still be considered the L category of, of aldose. The same thing true with ketosis. It doesn't actually predict the rotation. So the DL is specific only to the position of the alcohol. It does not actually give us ideas as to whether or not it's dextro and levorotatory. So this makes it a bit more complicated because you'll see for something as simple as what I drew before, where we just had the alcohol group here. Yes. The D and the L actually refer to the optical rotation. When we name these complexes, we actually have to specify the rotations because it isn't actually inherent. That DL is not inherent to the actual optical rotation, but rather just to the position of the alcohol on that first carbon beneath the aldehyde or the ketone. But that's where that naming system comes from. And yes, we're stuck with it. But to our credit, it's really not such a bad system.